It's Fernando Ruiz Art. There we go. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And today, we've got a fairly important lesson, or at least it's a, it is a common lesson, or a common problem, I should say, that we need to uh, address, and that is how to properly place a hat, or we'll actually cover some assorted headgear, but how to place a hat on somebody's head. And one of the biggest mistakes right off the bat that some people make is they don't draw the whole head when they put on a hat, when they put a hat on a character. They kind of treat the hat as though the hat itself is the, the top of the person's head. So right away, regardless of whether they have a hat or not, what I do is I draw the person's whole head. So right now I'm just very quickly throwing a, a person together, just drawing a, a head, generic face. Um, and I draw the whole head, even though I'm going to end up covering some of it. But that's okay, because by having the head there, the hat will sit naturally on the person's head. And also, too... The person will look like they still have a skull happening under that hat. It won't be like the, the, the head ends where the hat begins. So we have a whole complete head. We don't have to go in and add hair. If there's hair, if any hair is visible, once I put the hat on, then I could worry about that then. But right now, I have a head. And then what I want to do is I'm going to draw, let's say, a, your basic cowboy hat. I'm going to draw the body of the hat itself as it rests on his head. And this way, too, I could line up the hat with the head so that, just adjusting the lighting here for a second, so that the, the hat is actually sitting on that head. Sometimes you see a hat and it's drawn just not in, in proper proportion with the head. So it ends up looking kind of small and silly. Like the person is wearing a little kid's hat, something like that doesn't fit him. So this lines up with his head. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the brim, the brim of the hat. And notice this is the underside of the brim what's happening on the side and towards the back. The front dips forward. And if I wanted to bring it a little lower, I absolutely could. And then the other side is gonna wrap around like that. And again, you know, if we could see some hair, so maybe this guy will have some sideburns or maybe some longer hair, that's fine. Some hair on this side, sideburns. Maybe a little scruff. Longer hair. And then just to, you know, maybe he might have some sort of, you know, rope or something to, to fasten the, to separate the brim from the body of the hat. Maybe an indentation here of the hat. Maybe an indentation there. And we can shape it a little bit more. But that becomes, so that is how that hat will sit on him. And it, and it sits on him naturally, it rests on him, and it looks like it's, it, it's, it's a real hat. It looks like it's, it, it's sitting on his head the way a hat is supposed to. And that's the issue with a lot of, um, a lot of headgear, not just hats, but um, helmets too. If we could go over. Same thing will apply. Draw the the head. Okay. And it's almost like you gotta pretend like he isn't gonna be wearing any sort of headgear. That way you have as solid a head as possible. I'm drawing an angry guy because I want to do a helmet. 
I want this to be a, a specific helmet. So again, you draw, you know, I don't want to go too far into the ear because I am going to cover that up. But as much of the head. And then once you're satisfied, you have enough of a shape to build on, okay, then we could add the headgear. I'm going by memory on this guy's helmet, so I hope I get it right. If I don't get the details right, I'm sure people will let me know in the comments below. This is a very specific helmet. Sometimes with a lot of helmets, you see them drawn small as though there couldn't possibly be a head under there. So that's why it's very important. Draw that head first, add the helmet around it. So I hope by now you will have recognized this as everybody's favorite evil mutant Magneto. When I was a kid, I called him Magneto. Magneto just sounded very silly to me. But I'll defer to the proper pronunciation. If you want to keep him a little bit more sinister, or more like his early versions, you could close this gap up a little bit more so we see less of his face. And of course, we could always play a little bit with the shadow being cast by this uh, this headgear. And I know he has sort of this design that goes around the eye openings. Comes down here. I'm not exactly sure how it goes around the base of it. So again, I'll defer to what you guys say. And this being a, a metal helmet, nice shiny metal helmet, Could add in all sorts of streaks. I could take my eraser too, clean up some of those lines, some of that cranium that I don't need anymore. But ultimately, we have a guy that looks like he can actually be wearing the helmet he's supposed to. So that's my quick, rough Magneto. Okay, now we're gonna try adding a hood on a, on a character. And a hood is a little different. Actually, a hood matters even more that you add, that you draw the whole head. Okay, even more than with the hat and the helmet. And the reason being, is that the hat and the helmet are hard, solid objects. Okay, the hood tends to be, unless we're talking about something very specific, but most hoods are just cloth. Okay, so that just, that means that the hood is probably just going to sit and rest on the shape of the head. So it's very important to get that, that head shape down just so that hood will really lay on the head as as naturally as possible. Uh, sometimes you see these these really puffed out hoods that just don't they don't look right. They don't look like they're they're natural. They just look kind of inflated on the head. Okay, so once again, very important. Just draw the whole head as though the hood weren't there, and then and I'm drawing. One of my favorite hooded guys here. Let's see if you can know who he is. And then what you do is you add the hood afterwards. And really, I, I, I went a little bit darker with the head than I needed to. Um, but I just put it, I just make it that dark so it's really visible on camera. So now I know that cranium is there. And the, the hood is going to follow the cranium somewhat loosely. 
and it's going to sink, okay? Because the hood is excess material, it's going to sink down and gather and bunch up around the neck. If we see any of the interior of the hood, it'll probably be dark in there. This will all be cloth. I still wanna do a, a video on capes. That might be a, a topic for next week, doing capes. I know The Incredibles has made capes unpopular, but I don't care. I like capes. I like superheroes with capes. So I'm just cleaning this guy up a little bit. And this guy, if you haven't pieced it together, is one of my favorite guys, Moon Knight. Sometimes we could go a little lower with the hood. And a lot of times with Moon Knight, you don't see anything of, of what's going on under that hood. I'm, I'm exposing the face a little bit more, just so, just for our lessons on the hood. But sometimes it's just pitch black under there and all you see are his eyes glowing underneath there. Sometimes Moon Knight is, is shown to have kind of a not a, an entirely form-fitting mask. Sometimes the mask is, looks a little baggy under that, that hood. So I'm trying to get a little bit of that in there. One thing I hate, that I utterly despise, and this has been a trend with Moon Knight in recent years, is that dumb stitching that they draw down the center. What a way to break up that really nice design. What a way to add clutter. Artists today, they can't resist cl cluttering up and, and just cluttering up a design instead of just letting color, or in Moon Knight's case, a lack of color, just be the design, you know? Nope, we gotta add stitches and seams to every square inch of a character. And if there aren't enough stitches and seams, let's add armor and pouches and belts. So. There we go. There is Moon Knight. And that's how I would add a hood. So, oh, actually, one of the most distinct hats of all. And I gave my, my classes at the Kubert School this lesson this week. That is our guy, Jughead. And with Jughead... I don't know if I've done a video specifically where I explain Jughead, where I talk about drawing Jughead, but with him, once I've drawn his, his basic head shape, and Jughead has this long, really ovalish head shape, I always go in and I draw the hat, okay? I draw the hat because the hat is such a prominent shape on Jughead. Um... It's really going to dictate where a lot of the other stuff on Jughead goes. So. But otherwise, you know, that, that ellipse, that, that oval that I started with, that's the head shape. I mean, I'm really treating Jughead's hat pretty much like any other, like the hat on any other character. So. That's, that's the basic moral of this story when you're drawing the hat you draw the head first draw the head first draw the the unhatted head first and then you draw the hat so there's a quick jug head and that hat on jug head that can be tricky okay don't let that deceive you all right, so that's, those are my hats. Those are, that's my, my headgear. Um, you know, if there's some specific headgear that I didn't cover that you'd like me to go over, please let me know, and uh, I'll be, I'd be happy to do a part two to this one. Um, but for right now, this is what I've got. If any questions on any of this stuff that I mentioned, talked about, please let me know. I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I uh, hope it um, 
Hope it'll make a difference in your future hat drawings and helmet drawings. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, please click like, consider sharing, let the world know that I'm out here. All right, that's about it, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Keep drawing. Keep drawing. Bye-bye.